All right, how's it going guys? So my name is Kieran and I'm here for the BMS to talk to you about mummies. When people start to talk about mummies, you will often think of ancient Egypt and the pharaohs and Tutankhamun, and you might even think about how awesome The Rock was playing the Scorpion King in The Mummy 2, The Mummy Returns. However, there is one mummy I want to talk about in particular today, and his name is Ertzi. Now, Ertzi is what is known as a natural mummy, which means that instead of someone coming along and removing all of his internal organs and picking his brains out through his nose and pouring chemicals on him and wrapping him in bandages and burying him at the bottom of a giant pyramid, Ertzi had the kind of nicer process of just dying, falling in some ice and freezing to death which meant that he had pretty much the same effect of being preserved very, very well for thousands of years. So after he died, Erzi lay along the border of Italy and Austria in a mountainous range called the Erzl Alps. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, wow, this is amazing, his name's Erzi, and he was found in the Erzl Alps, you need to pause this video, have a little sit down, and think about how silly you have been, because Erzi was named after the Erzl Alps, we don't actually know what his real name was. But anyway, one day a group of hikers came along and saw what looked like a human body sticking out of this block of ice in front of them. And so they ran along and tried to save this poor person, but unfortunately they were about 3,300 years too late. After digging him up and having a look at him, archaeologists were amazed at how well Ertzi had actually been preserved. You could still find a lot of the pieces of his clothing very well intact. You found his toolkit, which had all of the items he had with him, which I go into much better detail on in my info sheet, Ertzi the Iceman, which you can find in the description below. He was so well preserved that people could actually determine how he died from an arrow wound to the shoulder, which is pretty badass if you ask me. But the thing which is most interesting to us is two of the items found in his toolkit, which happened to be fungi. There were two species which Ertzi carried with him. First, there was the Piptoporus betulinus, also known as the birch polypore fungus, and there was also the Fomus fomentarius, or the tinder fungus. No, 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 not a fungus which allows you to meet up with other single people in your area, a tinder fungus, as in something which helps you start fires. And so after this, like any good scientist would, or like a child trying to annoy their parents whilst they're in a long car journey, they started asking why. In order to do this, they had to employ the help of some very skilled mycologists who told them, I'm not telling you anything if you don't give me 50 quid. No, but in all seriousness, the mycologists were able to come up with some very interesting and plausible explanations for why Ertzi would carry around these fungi as part of his essential life toolkit. As for the birch polypore fungus, people have known for absolutely ages that this can be very, very useful medicinally. It has a stipic effect when rubbed on wounds, which basically means it can stop bleeding, and it also has some very useful antiseptic properties which help to ward off bacterial infections in wounds. And of course, when Ertzi was up and alive, off fighting all of the local tribes of men, bacterial infections were a very, very big deal. As I talked about in my penicillin fact sheet, before fungi gave us the miracle drug, which is penicillin, if you fell over and grazed your knee and got a blood infection, which happened to a lot of people, you had a very good chance of dying. There wasn't any pill you could just take to help with the infection. This means that any kind of measures which you could take to stop the infection happening in the first place were tremendously helpful. Over the years, the birch polypore has also been added to drinks in order to act as a laxative in order to, and I'm sorry for the mental image here, but to flush out any parasitic infestations someone might acquire in their stomach. And after they cut Ertzi open after pulling him out from the ice, they found that he had this exact affliction on his stomach. So that leads us to the inevitable question of did Ertzi know about these properties of the fungi he was carrying? It's kind of an impossible question to answer, but Paul Stamets, the world famous mycologist, thinks that the birch polypore actually has a lot of traits and qualities which we don't even know about yet. He thinks it could be used to treat things like West Nile virus, influenza, cowpox, and smallpox. So Ertzi may well have been carrying it around, warding off diseases which we didn't even realize you could ward off with it. That is the very frustrating thing about mummies. Despite what the movies tell you, they are very reluctant to disclose their ancient secrets by word of mouth. And the second fungus he carried was, like I said, the tinder fungus, which is a lot easier to explain what he was using it for. Basically, the fungus is extremely flammable and Ertzi therefore almost definitely used it to flam stuff. 
and by that I mean set stuff on fire. After running chemical tests on the sample found on Ertzi, scientists concluded that it had been used multiple times to start fires and transport fires from one place to another. This was obviously a great bit of kit for Ertzi because living in an icy mountainous region, fire can be a very useful tool. You can cook things with it, you can burn things with it, and you can rain flames upon your enemies all wonderful uses. So it turns out Ertzi was a pretty cool guy. He staved off death with a fungus, he was eventually killed by an arrow wound, and if any of the artist's depictions of him are correct, he also had a pretty awesome beard. So here is to you Ertzi, bravo. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to see more like this, obviously subscribe to the British Mycological Society YouTube channel. If you want to check out any of the other stuff I've done, it's all on there as well. And I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.